good. Thank you. Wonderful, Hemant Bhai. Thank you. Are you able to see my screen, Lalit? All okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. We can see. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much for the wonderful introduction, Lalit. It's always a pleasure to be here, and uh, I thank AOS, uh, Sipla. and all other people here the extremely great uh, stalwarts i like the previous speakers the debate was really fantastic both prashant and avinandra and uh, sapnesh was also were very good these are my financial interest i just want to talk to you about management of our cataract surgery in the presence of coexisting diabetic retinopathy as you know diabetes mellitus is influencing the function morphology of the eye lens the cataract is the second most complication of diabetes mellitus on the eye and you the risk of the cataract in diabetes is uh, various factors are coming into play like age of the patient the duration and severity of the retinopathy the glycosylated hemoglobin levels associated with hypertension renal disease smoking multiple prp treatments pdr ppv P um, uh, this past plan of vitrectomy for vitreous hemorrhage or trd the basic <laughs> uh, pathophysiology is glucose aldose reductase producing increased sorbitol retained within the lens which produces an osmotic gradient and vacuoles and it produces something like an intumescent or lens swelling or, or opacification of the cat, of the of the cataract of the of the lens so there are different, different different types of the uh, cataract the psc cataract which is the most common the cortical the mixed type very very unique to diabetes mellitus is a snowflake cataracts which are very very typically seen on the posterior capsule a subcapsular area that is the posterior subcapsular the snowflake variety which is very very typical in patients who got diabetes mellitus the various associated scenarios as far as the diabetes <clears throat> you can have a diabetic macular edema you can have a high risk pdr you can have a vitreous hemorrhage in the posterior segment as well investigations as you all know optical coherence tomography oct angiography we discussed that very well in the debate fluorescent angiography fundus photograph and all these are very very important pre operative minimize the worsening of the disease glucose control pan retinal photocoagulation focal laser treatment maximizing results after or with cataract surgery pre operative injections steroids vegf inhibitors and even the vegf blockers as well and uh, uh, <clears throat> the surgery is very uh, straightforward mainly phaco emulsification is a preferred method as far as the diabetes mellitus patients are concerned 6 mm or 5.5 or 6 mm ccc because i don't want to have a smaller ccc which can produce capsular phimosis in these patients which can hinder the posterior segment view thorough hydro dissection and hydro delineation phaco emulsification nucleus removal divide and conquer stop and chop or phaco chop whatever is um, uh, what is preferred technique as far as a surgeon is concerned irrigation aspiration making sure that you remove all the cortical material capsular polish complete removal of viscoelastic material pc tear with vitreous plaques use tramstone to stain the anterior vitreous facilitating removal of the vitreous from the anterior chamber as well <clears throat> io selection you can either go for a foldable hydrophobic acrylic which is the preferred option size at least 6 mm optic again you want to facilitate for example if you want to do a prp post laser just to show you a cataract surgery uh, how i'm doing a slightly larger excess about 5.5 mm aim for a larger excess can see the typical posterior subcapsular cataract which is very very typically in patients with diabetes mellitus as well along with the some amount of nucleus sclerosis in this particular patient and can see i'm doing a fairly larger excess much larger than the what i do for my regular patients because i want to make sure that in the future there is no capsular phimosis and i want to have a an indirect view of the posterior segment as well and the routine cataract surgery the direct chop technique as i you see you can see that i'm doing the direct chop taking followed by implantation of the foldable lens in the back which is very again very very important because these patients are more prone to inflammation as well i'm going to show you different case scenarios as far as the combined combination of cataract surgery with uh, uh, diabetic uh, macular edema or diabetic retinopathy is concerned both eyes mild cataract with dme pre operative vision 618 post operative vision is about 69 i did an anti uh, intravitreal anti vegf Uh, uh, with uh, with the laser in this patient and 3 months later cataract surgery the main idea of this particular thing you can see the uh, the posterior subcapsular cataract this is a od picture with the csme as well the os picture with csme and you can see the lasers uh, the the after 3 months 
can see that preoperative vision is about 618, fairly significant macular edema with a macular CMT of about 750 microns. I can see that I'm going ahead with the cataract surgery after three months. Initially, stabilizing the retina, not going out to the cataract surgery initially. That is about the take home message I want to give clearly for all the people here that to stabilize the retina and then go ahead with the cataract surgery. By in the stabilize the retina in the form of an anti VEGF or lasers or whatever is comfortable for you, whatever is indicated in this patient. You can see the postoperative vision is improved to six, nine parts. The OCT is almost flat. Case number two is OD, uh, PSC with the DME, preoperative vision six by 24. Postoperative vision is about six by six. The significant cataract with intravitreal is cataract with intravitreal OCDX. Can see the cataract is quite significant, and uh, the patient had uh, um, uh, uh, the diaptic macular edema as well. And can see that the uh, the view is not very good because of the dense cataract. The preoperative vision six twenty four again with the macular thickness of about seven hundred eighty five. And can see that. I'm combining the cataract surgery. I always put a suture when I put an OCDEX because OCDEX gives a lot of pressure and always uh, I don't want the wound to open up during the thing. At the end of the cataract surgery, I always inject perioperatively uh, uh, um, or in, uh, this thing, intravitreal OCDEX as well, which is a dexamethasone implant, which makes life easy for me. And you can see the postoperative, the, the OCT is also flattened, but the vision is also improved from 624 to 66. Case three, again, cataract with vitreous hemorrhage. Preoperative vision is about 6 CF, 1, milli, one, one meters, and postoperative vision is about 6 by 60. Cataract with vitrectomy was done. Significant cataract in this patient. Significant vitreous hemorrhage. There is also a TRD. You can see the left eye. The postoperative vision is about 618 in this particular patient. Again, you can see the preoperative OCT and the postoperative OCT as well. Case 4, again, mature cataract with DME in the other eye. Mature cataract. The B scan is normal. We are not able to know whether the DME is there or not. The preoperative vision is about hand movements. The postoperative vision is about 618 in this particular patient. Cataract with prophylactic injected in OCDEX. Always remove the cataract and have a look at the posterior segment in these patients. Most probably when, <coughs> when they have macular edema on one eye, they will have macular edema on the other eye also. I go ahead and go, inject OCDEX in this particular patient. This is a patient who had a cataract in that eye and the left eye, the, uh, the, the macular edema was that was quite significant as well. And so I went ahead with the thing. So these patients, the patients, the, the, the pupils don't dilate in patients with diabetic patients. And also, sometimes you might have to see, some. sometimes there can be a small membrane. This is a patient who had a complicated cataract as well. And also a significant diabetic macular edema as well. And you can see and I'm putting the iris hooks and going ahead with the cataract surgery and then going ahead with the injection of OCDEX. So you need to have pupil expansion devices in these patients, sometimes because they don't dilate as well uh, like the normal patients. And this is another important thing. This is a postoperative vision, the postoperative OCT, where the OCT is almost flattened. Case number five, cataract with TRD, preoperative vision 1 by 60, postoperative vision 6 by 36, cataract with vitreous vitrectomy with membrane peeling was done. You can see the preoperative vision and the postoperative vision 6 by 36 you can improve with the silicon oil. And we can see the OCT pre and post uh, uh, post operative as well. Case number six, cataract with peripheral diabetic retinopathy and uh, 1 by 60 vision, 6 by 18 vision. I did the visible PRP and then uh, the, did the cataract surgery and then, then the completed the PRP in the, in the post operative patient, in the post operative thing and see the visible PRP and then uh, went ahead with the cataract surgery in this particular patient. And you can see the pre operative vision and the OCT and the post-operative vision and the OCT in this particular patient, which has improved from 1 by 60 to 6 by, 6 by 18. Case number 7, cataract with PDR, pre-operative vision 6 by 60 and post-operative vision 6 by 18. Visible PRP again, complete PRP. You can see that, you can see here, this is what we see. The main idea of this particular talk is that try to fill up the retina as much as possible if you're able to do visible PRP for even patients, the presence of vitreous hemorrhage before you deal with the cataract in these patients because there can be worsening of the cataract of the diaptic retinopathy after the, uh, the cataract surgery. And this you have to keep in mind always when you're dealing with this thing. So I try to do the visible, that is to, to do the PRP as much as possible and then stabilize the retina to a certain extent before you take up the patient with cataract surgery. Take home messages, minimal cataract, stabilize the retina. First, give injections and laser and then probably don't be in a hurry to do the cataract surgery. After three months, you can probably do the cataract surgery. 
dense cataract combine the cataract surgery with intravitreal injections either the anti vegf and lucentis avastin or osidex or tricot advanced diabetic retinopathy obviously you have to do a phaco combined with the vitrectomy with the gas or oil or whatever you are comfortable with and whatever is necessary depending on the severity of the cases management of cataract with dme phaco plus lucentis or ilia or avastin or tricot or osidex these are the various uh, things which are um, available in your armamentarium which you can use very effectively thank you very much for the wonderful opportunity and the patient attention as well thank you mohan uh, you see what i liked in your talk was the was the uh...